Hey, Psych2Goers, and welcome to another video. Thank you all so much for the love and support that you've given us, enabling us to make yet another exploration into everyday psychology. So let's begin. Loving yourself may sound simple, but we all know how hard it is. Sometimes it can be a roller coaster ride between being happy with yourself and wishing you could change. There are so many things that affect your image of yourself, and some of them may not be good. Things such as the media set false expectations and ideals. It can be a long journey to accepting this, but it's worth it. We made this video to remind you that you should never give up on loving yourself because you deserve it and you're worth it. So here are 12 things that do not determine your self-worth. Number one, your achievements. Can you relate to loving yourself so much when something goes well, but the second something goes wrong, your self-worth immediately takes a plunge. Whether it's your grades, your job, or a sport, it's easy to base your self-worth on what you accomplish. But how much you're worth does not depend on your achievements, especially when it comes to competitions. You can't control your competitors, so you don't need to blame yourself when things don't go your way. You are more than just a bullet point list of all of your accomplishments. You're a complex person with a personality, hobbies, and so much more than your achievements. And it all makes you worth it. Number two, your income and job. Are you second guessing your career? Do you often think of switching your job? While your job plays a big part in your lifestyle, it does not determine your worth. People who have less money aren't lesser than others, like society and the media sometimes portrays. Your job and income are sometimes the result of your situation. There are so many factors that influence them, like location, the economy, and competition. So they aren't really a reflection of who you are. Number three, your childhood. Do you avoid thinking about your childhood? Do the memories make you uncomfortable? Your childhood may shape a lot of things about you, but it does not determine your worth. It's a phase well on its way out, and you mustn't let it overwhelm you. Your rough childhood does not define who you are. After all, you have no control over who your parents are and you're not responsible for their choices. It may take some time to accept this, but your past does not define you. Number four, your level of education. Much like your income, your level of education is also the result of so many factors. One of the biggest factors when it comes to deciding whether to go to college and where is how much money your family has. You can't change how much money your family has or the location of the schools you wanna go to. Therefore, you don't need to feel bad if you don't have a higher level of education. It doesn't mean you're less intelligent or worth less than those who do. Number five, how other people view and treat you. Do you constantly stress about how others see you? Are you constantly trying to live up to their standards? Other people have no way of knowing who you truly are. While family and friends may have a good idea of it, only you fully know yourself. Knowing this, your self-worth isn't based upon others' limited and sometimes biased opinions of you. You cannot control what other people think, nor how they act. Similarly, don't base your value upon something completely up to others. Trying to please others will ultimately lead you to being miserable. So try not to stress yourself out with other people's opinions, even if it is difficult. Number six, other people's achievements. Do you compare your achievements to other people's? It's okay because everyone does that occasionally. It's so easy to look at what you've done and compare it to someone else's achievements, especially when the internet gives you access to everyone's amazing lives. It may be hard to internalize, but what other people do doesn't define you. You can't control others, so the only thing you can do is try your best. Regardless of the result, trying your best is enough. After all, everyone is different with varying skill sets and experiences, so it's no use comparing two completely unique people. Number seven your appearance. Are you unhappy with some physical feature of yours? Is there anything you wish you could change about your appearance? Chances are the answer is yes. Almost everyone wants what someone else has, which is the sad truth, especially living in today's society. It can be so easy to compare yourself to other people and all the gorgeous models on TV, but try to remember that what you look like doesn't determine how much you're worth. You've probably heard it before and we know how hard it is to accept and internalize, but it's true. You don't need to feel bad because you might not look the way the people on the TV do, because everyone is beautiful in their own unique way. Number eight, your relationship status. 
Are you still looking for the one? But it seems like everyone you know is getting hitched. Nowadays, there's so much pressure to have a significant other and a picture-perfect relationship. It can feel as if you constantly need to be pursuing someone out of fear of being a desperate, lonely single. However, there's nothing wrong with being single. It doesn't make you less of a person because it means you're taking more time to focus on yourself and what you wanna do. You will only go for it when it feels right. While a relationship may be nice, it's not something you need to have to be valued. Nine, the number of friends you have. Do you value quantity over quality when it comes to friends? Or is it difficult for you to keep up with your circle of friends? Having more friends doesn't measure what kind of person you are. If you only have a few, it doesn't mean you're not sociable or kind, but it means you have a specific taste in people, which isn't a bad thing. You're invested in finding friends who understand and care about you. On the other hand, having more friends doesn't mean you're shallow and only interested in popularity. It means that you're friendly and open to new people. The number of friends you have doesn't say anything about your self-worth. Rather, it's the quality of your friends that really matters. 10, your social media status. Are you an avid scroller? Do you post on social media habitually or occasionally? With the amount of emphasis on social media, the world seems to revolve around how many likes you get. There is so much pressure to have a picture-perfect, aesthetically pleasing life. However, your worth is not measured by how many people like your posts. Social media is for sharing parts of your life and forming connections with people. So while getting likes may give you satisfaction, it doesn't determine your self-worth. Social media should be fun and uplifting, not a tool to gain validation. You are valid and worthy, regardless of your social media status. Number 11, your age. Both old and young people are often judged due to their age. People may think all young people are reckless and selfish, while all older people have their whole lives figured out. But your age doesn't control your personality, hobbies, likes, dislikes, and so much more. It's not a reflection of who you are, so it doesn't determine your worth. After all, age ain't nothing but number, right? Number 12, your decision to have children. There's a lot of societal pressure to have children in order to contribute to society. But having children is completely your own decision. Not having children doesn't make you less worthy than others who do because it's a major decision that affects you most of all. So it should be up to you. Remember, your decision is valid and valued either way. In the end, you're the only one who determines your self-worth. Cliche, but it's true. Not anyone or anything else, whether it be money, family, or friends. It may be hard, but just try to remember that you are more than any single aspect. We hope we're able to give you insight into some of the things that you shouldn't base your worth on. Do you use any of these things to measure your self-worth? If so, that's okay. We've all been there before and we're here for you. Leave a comment down below and share any experiences and thoughts you have as well. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share it with those out there still struggling with their self-worth. Don't forget to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.